Hello and welcome to Theme Park Information. In today's show we've got a new video uh, topic idea and that is Europe's best roller coaster. What we're going to be doing is picking a new roller coaster for each video, discussing why it's the best and then eventually when we've been on all of them, because there's a couple of really big ones open this year, we should be able to put them into some sort of tier system or ranking list and then pick the best roller coaster on the continent. The first coaster up is going to be Ride to Happiness at Plotsen and Danaprana, uh, located in Belgium, quite close to Bruges. Uh, now, this roller coaster opened in 2021, uh, so it's pretty brand new. Uh, it's a Mac Extreme Spinner, so effectively a spinning coaster, the train usually rotates. The extreme part is the fact that it has like vertical drops and goes upside down and has launches. Uh, so effectively, it's a family coaster, but on the next level. Uh, so, you might ask, why is this ride so good, so highly acclaimed? And effectively, there's a couple of small reasons for it. Uh, so firstly, is the actual spin in itself. Effectively, this ride has a sister coaster at Silver Dollar City, and that one uses, uh, like, effectively magnetic brakes to slow down the spin in. The one here doesn't. <laughs> that, it actually has free spin in which means you can have some very intense, very extreme, and very out there rides, which means you can have unbelievably fun and unbelievably different rides quite often. So let's go into a little bit of the layout and the, the sort of like area and stuff like that. So I'd say Brand New Coaster has a really nice sort of vibe. It's themed to like a festival and it kind of covers on that sort of thing. It has quite a, you know, quite a charming sort of character, you know, quite a nice atmosphere around the station and the queue line. So very good presentation, very good atmosphere, very good vibe, very good appeal and look. Obviously brand new, so it's yeah, very smooth and comfortable as well. It also starts with just a really interesting element. It is effectively referred to as a Jojo roll. Effectively, it's a slow moving uh, inversion where effectively you effectively just twist around. Really slow inversion in the front. You go through it at the back a little bit quicker. You then pause for a moment before launching. Admittedly, it is not the most powerful launch in the world, but the spinning does add a factor. Yes, you do spin as it launches and through the Jojo roll as well. Uh, you then soar up, uh, you know, effectively the highest point in the ride, and uh, you know, just press over. Uh, there's a little slight turn, so you're actually pointing outwards on the track before going down one of the best bits, which is a extremely potentially vertical drop. Now, I will say that bit the going up to it is okay. The drop down, if you are in the back row facing backwards, because uh, of spinning, uh, that bit is absolutely outrageous. One of the best elements and best drops on a ride ever. Really good, so good. Uh, you then effectively continue. There's a, effectively a turnaround section uh, where you kind of you get really disorientating because you kind of go up, twist slightly, go back down, and obviously again, where the train is itself rotating, you can very easily lose track of which direction is pretty much up, down, forward, backwards, everything. You then go through a very classic roller coaster inversion, the vertical loop, before going through uh, a corkscrew and stuff like that. And again, this is a really interesting ride because you could go for a side wave. And this is what I tend to find on this ride. You tend to do each of these inversions and elements so differently and so uniquely from what you've done previously. Where you're sitting on the train also matters, and where you're sitting in relation to the angle you're in also matters hugely. But following that, with still some really good momentum, you go into the second launch, uh, and this really kicks off the ride, or reignites the ride, should I say, where there's actually an airtime hill over it as well, which I will be honest, doesn't give you too much, but certainly doesn't take away anything. You then have quite possibly the most interesting uh, element. Effectively, it's a sort of double inversion, but what's very easy to happen for this is you're trained to be effectively sideways, and effectively you just flip over while going as it inverts. It is a surreal, you know, unreal sensation, and really good fun. You then effectively have like a nice uh, high-speed turn, quite low to the ground, and then before having a couple of really nice pops of airtime into the final break run. That is a very brief overview of the layout. I appreciate there's a couple of turns here and there. But for the most part, the layout of this ride is super fun, super interesting, really engaging. Utilises many different forces and aspects of the train and the design of the, uh, like the ride itself. It has good airtime, good forces. Uh, good intensity, really good drops, and it is quite smooth and comfortable with onboard audio as well. Uh, so, 
with all that being said, does this ride have any particular downsides? Uh, potentially, it, it is a little bit on the intense side, uh, especially can take you out of you if you want to ride it back to back to back. So it's not, it's re-rideable, but it's not, you, you can't really marathon it. You can't ride it all day, I would say, personally. The elements as well, sometimes you'll have an absolutely outrageous experience going through an element where you'll experience airtime for some reason, just because of where you're sat or how your seat is positioned. And then at the same time, whereas that is a huge positive, it also means potentially you could go through that element again, but with, but with none of the force. And it can mean that you, don't get me wrong, I think if you were to be in the best place for each element on the ride, and I don't know quite where that would be or in terms of like your vehicle location and where you'd be sitting, but the difference that could make to your ride experience is massive. And I think the fact is you could also be, and it's, it's still good if you go for it like, you know, in the least optimal place, but as I say, and it's, I suppose it's that sort of variance or variation which makes the ride so rideable and interesting, but it does mean that there's a potential that there's a going to be, that you could have a better ride. It's like, for example, if you're on the back train and you're going down the first drop effectively, if you're going down backwards, it's outrageous. One of the best ride roller coaster moments in Europe, probably the world on its own. If you go down it sideways, it's pretty good. If you go down it forwards, you kind of feel that you're being, you're missing out slightly, uh, you know, or if you're in the front row and you go down it, you might not have the same element, uh, you, know, you might not experience it the same way. So it's a bit of an interesting one. Personally, I think it's a 10 out of 10 coaster, an excellent addition for the park, and quite easily one of the best roller coasters in Europe. Whether or not it is, is a very interesting question, because there are some really strong competition out there, and some which are open, as I say, this year, which is why I thought it was a pretty good time to do this video series. So, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.